T.S. Eliot worked at a bank when he wrote The Wasteland. Bram Stoker published nine books while working as a theater manager. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm counting down five tips in order of how important I think they are for writing while you have a full-time job or a full-time life. Although the times have changed, the need to bring home the bacon has not. Those of us with creative passions often are required to work uh, day jobs to fund our lifestyles because our first drafts most certainly do not pay the bills. <laughs> there are also those that equally enjoy their day job and may never leave their full-time jobs. And still there are others who have a full-time life who are a stay-at-home mom or dad, take care of an elderly loved one, or volunteer daily for a nonprofit. For those that don't know, I work a full-time job at least 40 hours a week, and since I started taking my writing seriously, I have been struggling to find time to write. These tips are realistic tips. They're not make time to write, although that's obviously important. I try to break it down to help you guys in your daily lives, so these are tweaks that are realistic for almost any writer. And these are also epiphanies that I've had in recent years and I hope they serve you all on your own writing journeys. All right, first up on the countdown, number five, make lists, lists of everything. And I'm not even talking about lists for your writing. How could this possibly affect how much writing time you have? So here's a scenario that I've played out more times than I care to admit. Say you need to go to the grocery store after work. You really need milk, toilet paper, because there's not one single square in the house, and dinner fixins. So it's only three things, and you can remember that, right? You do all of your shopping, you brave the after work traffic, and the crowds, and you finally get home, and only when you open your bathroom door do you realize that you forgot to get toilet paper. Now, you don't wanna make your loved one go fix them up on the way home, or maybe they're already home, so it's up to you. Since you didn't make a list, now you have to take the time to drive back to the grocery store or CVS because you would pay for the inconvenience at this point. You have to wait through a bunch of people, you have to stand in line because there's only two registers open, and then you gotta drive all the way back home. If all of that only took 30 minutes, and it probably took longer than that, that's 30 minutes of your writing time that's wasted. Don't rely on your memory for anything. It can't be trusted when your writing time is at stake. Make to-do lists and grocery lists and mark calendar events in a joint location so your husband or your wife knows when soccer practice is. Organize your life so you don't waste a second of your precious writing time. Number four, prioritize and plan weekly. On a similar note, once you have everything written out that you need to do, you need to prioritize what needs to be done first. Make a plan at the beginning of the week so you're better prepared for life in general because life tries to get in the way of writing all the time. Are your parents coming over to visit on the weekend? Then you know you're gonna have to clean up the house throughout the week. But do you also have an editing deadline that's next week? Instead of cleaning for two days straight and then editing for four solid hours after work on Wednesday and Thursday, space it out. I know I can't sit in front of a computer for that long without just wearing myself out. I'll be too exhausted. Plan for the known events in your life so you can plan your writing time at, while being the most productive. In this example, keep your creative energy up by writing for two hours each day and then cleaning during your breaks or once you're finished. Chris Fox, whose channel I will link down below, talks about your creative well and how it's important to both fill it back up and not totally deplete it, kind of like a battery. Be realistic about what you can do and plan accordingly. Don't deplete your creative well. Don't drive yourself crazy. Number three, think of what you're going to write before you sit down to write it. I've mentioned this tip before, but it is so important. Anytime you find yourself waiting in line or driving or walking from the parking lot to your office building, let your mind wander to the scene that you plan to write that day. I'm an outliner, and even though I know what I'm going to write, I still let my mind wander to better visualize the scene. Prepare yourself for your writing session by passively just thinking about it all day. Let it sit on the back burner. Do you need to develop your characters more? Get in their heads during the day while you're doing mindless tasks. 
you can't write while you're folding laundry, but you can definitely iron out some of the more problematic areas or characters or plot. While you're at it, look for inspiration everywhere to fill your creative well. So it's kind of like your task before your writing task. I personally listen to audiobooks every day to and from work, and I'm always so much more motivated to sit down and write my own story after I've listened to a snippet from a really good book. Get yourself pumped for your writing sessions and have a plan for what you're going to write, even if you don't like outlining. Number two, analyze your life. This one is so difficult because it means different things for so many different people. Is working out important to you? Analyze your workout time to see if there's a way to streamline it. Is the gym 20 minutes away from your house? Try to buy weights at home or some kind of in-home gym. You can do your cardio outside or you can work out with YouTube videos to avoid that wasted 40 minute drive, maybe a couple times a week. Does cleaning take up a lot of your time? I'm just too lazy to clean, that's my problem. Some writers find it extremely helpful to hire a cleaning lady. This could be once a week, it could be once a month. Now that you're taking your writing seriously though, all of your time is money. So for some people, a couple extra hours a week is worth it to just pay a cleaning lady. Do you meet up with your girlfriends for brunch every Sunday or your guy friends for poker every Wednesday night? Ask if that's time that's actually well spent. Could you go every other week instead of every week? Is a large chunk of your Thursday night spent taking your kid to and from gymnastics practice? See if there's a parent, obviously one that you trust, that can trade up carpooling with you every other practice. This can cut your driving time in half and eliminate the need for you to be there and watch your kid do front flips and foam flips. Can you use public transportation? For some, this doesn't increase their travel time that much and it opens up some time that can be used to write while you're sitting on the bus. What I'm getting at here is that it's different for everyone. Pick apart the things that take up your time and then see if you can streamline them. Something that I'm trying to do this week is to look into grocery delivery because I hate going to the grocery store. And last, my top tip for you all, number one, bring your writing utensils with you everywhere. Writing habits are important. In a perfect world, we could all write for two hours immediately before or after work and get into a great routine. When you have a full-time life, writing for two hours at any time of the day seems impossible. So break it up throughout the day and you can do that by bringing your tools with you everywhere. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is ugh. Write a thousand words at lunch in your car or a nearby cafe. Have an appointment, punch out 200 words on your phone while you're waiting. Get on that phone app. Are you waiting in line to pick up your kids after school? Safely dictate 300 words. Don't run any children over. Imagine how much writing you could get accomplished in these little bitty pockets of time if you took your tools with you on the go. Gotta have tools. I've been so much more productive lately following this one step. So rather than browsing on Twitter or Instagram during my little breaks, I write or I edit. I just bring that with me and I do it while I'm in the car during lunch. So bring your notebooks, your cell phone app, and I am jealous of everybody that has Scrivener on their iPhones. Freaking iPhones. Or bring your laptop with you everywhere that you go and I promise you can fit in so much writing time before you even sit down for a planned writing session. Honestly, my next big purchase that I wanna make is a tablet that has a keyboard because it would be a lot lighter than my laptop and I could bring it with me everywhere and then have Scrivener on it all the time because the little Scrivener. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope this video was helpful. And if you have a full-time job or life and you have advice of your own, please leave a comment on any tips you have down below. I would love to hear from you and I'm sure everybody else would love to read your tips. Also, hop on over to Kristen Martin's channel because we were totally twinning this week and she posted a video about how she organizes her writing days with her full-time job. And we both had videos about full-time jobs this week. But the link to that video is down below in the description. Mini announcement, so you guys aren't surprised next time or whenever this happens. My background will change soon. I'm setting up my office right now and I plan to start filming my videos in the air, in there, in the air. So it'll be a more professional background than my living room. <laughs> 
So just a heads up if my videos start to look totally different. As always, subscribe to my channel if you enjoy these videos. And if you ever have any comments or any video suggestions, just drop a line down below and I'll try my best to get to it. Bye guys. Okay, so... I am a crazy person.